state capitol in Madison, Wisconsin. I referred earlier to this conversation that the governor had that has now become famous, certainly through Wisconsin and beyond. The conversation that Governor Walker had, an infamous 20-minute phone call with a man he thought to be the billionaire campaign donor David Koch, who is a funder of the Tea Party movement. During the prank call, Walker admitted he considered sending agent provocateurs to disrupt the peaceful protesters here in Madison. This excerpt from the call begins with a blogger named Ian Murphy from Buffalo, New York, impersonating David Koch. We'll back you any way we can. But uh, what we were thinking about the crowds was, uh, was planting some troublemakers. You know, the well, the only problem with the because we thought about that. The problem with, uh, or my only uh, gut reaction to that would be, uh, right now, the the and the lawmakers I've talked to have just completely had it with them. The public is not really fond of this. Yes, that was Governor Walker uh, here in Wisconsin speaking with the man he thought was David Koch. Well, on Thursday, the Madison police chief, Noble Ray, was asked about the governor's statement. The police chief said, quote, I find it very unsettling and troubling that anyone would consider creating safety risks for our citizens and law enforcement officers. Um, he also said something else when asked if he was being political. Um, he said that... Um, it certainly wasn't him who was entering into the world of politics. He said it was Governor Walker who was entering into the world of public safety, and that's why he felt he wanted to talk to the governor, a conversation that, at least at this point, it hasn't been reported that he's had. Um, speaking of police, we're joined right now by Jim Palmer, executive director of Wisconsin's Professional Police Association. What is your response to this part of the conversation uh, um, that has troubled so many people, the idea of the governor having considered sending in provocateurs. Sure. You know, our members are incensed. We've had uh, law enforcement officers from all across the state come and work at these rallies and work at these events uh, for the last two weeks, and they have been very impressed uh, by how peaceful everyone has been. Uh, and they've commented uh, that to me personally. So for the governor or someone on his staff to even consider doing something that could put officers or members of the public in harm's way uh, is extraordinarily troubling. And uh, our members are very, uh, very disturbed by it. For people who aren't familiar with unions, why is collective bargaining so important? Well, it gives the employees a voice at the table, and uh, we think that the people who provide the services uh, ought to have a, a, an opportunity to provide some input on how those services are provided. Uh, and we can make services uh, delivered in a more effective and cost-efficient manner, um, and it really, I think, it benefits everybody, the taxpayers uh, and the local governments alike. Um, Malin Mitchell, the f head of the Firefighters Association, uh, talking about being involved with this. Firefighters are exempted. They're not going to be hit by Governor Walker. And the same with the police. So yes. why be here? That's true. Well, you know, it's interesting because many law enforcement officers tend to be conservative, uh, but they know the difference between right and wrong, and they view this as completely wrong. And uh, law enforcement officers, again, from all across the state, are proud to stand with their fellow devoted public employees uh, and oppose something that they just view as absolutely and, and morally wrong. What do you understand is going to happen this weekend? Hundreds, if not a thousand people slept here last night. Tens of thousands crowd in here during the day, chanting, talking about democracy in the workplace, talking about taking back their state. At some point, they very much fear, especially this weekend, that they're going to be thrown out. Uh, who's going to do this throwing out if the police are on their side? Well, that's a good question. I think, you know, law enforcement officers will do their job, and they'll do it to the best of their training. Um, I hope and have every expectation that it won't come to that, and that uh, someone in the Department of Administration or the governor's office uh, will uh, you know, decide that, you know, everything has been peaceful, and we ought to maintain and keep it that way. And words to police officers around the country right now. You know, I'm being contacted uh, by officers in Massachusetts and Ohio, and they are, everyone's watching. And uh, they are very supportive of what our members are doing here and our organization's position. And again, even though we are exempted, we want to stand with our fellow public employees.
We want to thank you very much for being with us. Jim Palmer is executive director of the Wisconsin's Professional Police Association. You represent nearly 11,000 members from all across the state. 11,000 members here in Madison, Wisconsin. We're going to go to break right now. When we come back, we're going to hear from people all over Madison, Wisconsin, and hear also from the protests that took place outside of um, the Koch brothers, well, a new office that they've opened up in town. This is Democracy Now! We're broadcasting about the uprising in Madison, the uprising in Wisconsin. Stay with us.